If only it were so easy to learn by osmosis. If we could just sit back and take a nap with an open book over your eyes and then wake up understanding calculus, wouldn't that be awesome? But unfortunately we don't live in that world. We have to go to class, we have to stay awake, read books, manuals, do our assignments, engage our brains, much to Garfield's dismay. So contrary to popular belief, listening is not easy. Doing it effect effectively actually requires concentration and energy. So here are some quick tips for increasing your listening skills and your retention. Be quiet. Silence is more than just staying quiet while someone else is speaking. You also have to silence those inner voices and those thoughts and really engage in what someone is saying. Maintain eye contact. Look at the person, if it's possible, if you're in a face-to-face -face class while they're speaking. Doing so, it demonstrates your attentiveness to the person who's speaking, but it also helps keep your mind from wandering. And then display openness. You can do this even now when you're listening to something. Adjust your body, uncross your arms and your legs, sit up straight, face forward. Engaging your body also happens to engage your mind. These two things happen simultaneously. Listen without response. This doesn't mean that you don't ask questions or never respond. It just means that you wait for the appropriate pause or the appropriate moment to respond. And then send acknowledgments. It's important to let the speaker know periodically that you're still there, so a simple nod or leaning forward can signal this. Sometimes ordinary reading methods just simply are not enough. It's easy to get bogged down in our textbooks and not actually retain anything. So the key to effective reading is to remember to not expect to be entertained. So you don't read your textbook uh, like you read a novel. So <laughs> you get into this reading strategy together and then your next reading time will actually be worthwhile. So let's talk a little bit about how we do this. One reading strategy that is strongly encouraged is SQ3R, survey, question, read, recite, and review. So when we survey, you look over what you're about to read. You scan it. Look for those bold words, those headings, the information boxes, and the introductions and the concluding paragraphs. Those are the things you go over. Then you question. Question what you're looking at. Ask yourself, what do I already know about this subject? What do the instructors, instructors say about this, about this particular subject? Read the questions also that appear at the end of the chapter. That helps you kind of know what you're looking forward to. And then you read it. And remember, as I said before, this is not a novel. So you don't treat it like a novel. There's a reason why people reread books. You don't always get everything when you're reading the same way you would as a novel. So you want to look for those answers to your questions. You already have those questions in your mind, so you're going to look for those while you're reading. You're also going to reread something that doesn't make sense to you. So if it's unclear, you don't just say, oh, I don't know what that means, and go on. You reread it. You try to ascertain it and understand what it says. And then slow down. It's not a race. You want to retain this. So if that means if it's too much, come back and do it in segments. And then you recite it. And this can be taking notes. You can recite it verbally if that helps you. You can reword it into language that makes sense. Whatever hap happens to work for you. And then finally we review it. This is the part that a lot of people leave out. Take a break. Then you reread that passage. You look for answers to those unanswered questions that you might have had earlier. And then be sure that you know all those bold printed words and understand why if there was a picture used or a graphic used. Be sure that you know what those are. Now when you're taking notes, make sure you know every word and symbol that is presented in the documents that you're reading. And if something is abstract and doesn't make sense to you, put it in your own words. In your textbooks, you've probably noticed the large margins, and they're there for taking notes. So if you feel comfortable writing in your textbook, then do it. And also, 
make highlights um, and underline things but don't go crazy with it if you highlight every word it's not going to make anything pop out it's just going to be one big mess so make it meaningful so we're going to talk about note taking which again is just one part of this learning process effective note taking actually has three parts you observe record and then you review. So we talked about observing, this is the recording part, and then finally you review. The best notes, they're not too detailed and they're also not too limited. They're designed to be this quick reference to data and lecture highlights that help you when you're studying later on. So you can use um, margins for your graphic signals if you want, if that's easy for you. Develop a glossary if you're using shorthand so you remember what you used. Shorthand essentially is the same as like when you use texting language you are generally just making things into shorthand and you can do the same thing. You can use symbols or whatnot. But if you use, if you, let's say you use um, a certain symbol like an asterisk to denote that something's important um, or to say that this was something verbatim quoted from the teacher. However you want to do that, make sure you made a little glossary for yourself to remind yourself what those symbols actually mean. So keep your pen in your hand. This may sound silly, but when you put your pen down, then that makes mental vacations all the more easier. So keep that pen in your hand. And then write down, if your instructor explains something, always write that down make note of any concepts or rules or techniques that they emphasize when an instructor emphasizes something it generally means that it's important ask questions again at the appropriate time and then leave blanks if you miss something um, just jot down a word so let's say your instructor said something and you only you're writing fervently you only got that last phrase or that last word write that down because you can go back later and see if someone else had taken those notes or if it's in your reading or something to help you fill it in later and finally tips for studying I'll let you read these yourself but you can it's very important for you to create a schedule for your studying and this may sound silly but I promise you it will change the way you study the schedule should be bulked up at the beginning of the week when you're not tired when you have more energy and you can complete readings and outlines and better review them don't spend more than two hours on any gamut given topic so don't give let's say you set aside six hours on Saturday to do your work don't do more than two hours in any given area when you do that it just makes your work less um, effective and your mind just really has a difficult time staying on task so it's good to kinda keep two hour windows and blocks in your studying time <laughs>